good afternoon everyone so today we are going to discuss about anti arrhythmic drugs so let's start with introduction so arrhythmia is nothing but disturbances in heart rate rhythm impulses generation or conduction of the electrical impulses so whenever there will be the difficulty occurred in conduction of the impulses due to some risk factors at that time the condition is called the arrhythmic condition so in arrhythmic conditions whatever the action potential is conducted that will going to disturb whatever the depolarization and repolarization phases are there of action potential both are going to disturb so these disturbances can leads to alteration in overall cardiac function that can be life threatening life threatening means it may resulted into death of the person so let's start with arrhythmic drugs that is antiarrhythmic drugs so antiarrhythmic drugs are those drugs which going to prevent or treat cardiac arrhythmia so let next is mechanism of arrhythmia so disturbances in impulse generation may be because of two factor first one is the abnormal automaticity and second one is the delayed after depolarization then second one is that is disturbances of impulse conduction that may occur as impulse may recirculate in heart causing repeated activation that is called the reentry of that impulses in the heart and second one is the conduction block so whatever the blood circulation occur in proper manner that going to disturb in the arrhythmic condition so here you can observe two diagram first diagram of the heart that is normal heart and second one is the atrial fibrillation so this atrial fibrillation is one of the type of cardiac arrhythmia now in this diagram you can observe in the first that is normal heart diagram whatever the impulse generation that will be conducted from the ac node then after ac node it will going to av node from av node it will conducted to the Purkinje's fibers and from Purkinje's fibers it will circulate to all part. But in case of the arrhythmic condition, you can say that atrial fibrillation. So whatever the smooth conduction of impulses should be there from AC net up to the Purkinje's fibers that going to disturb. Now here you can observe whatever the impulse that should be conducted from AC net to the Purkinje's fibers they going to re-enter into the AC node part of the heart and further conduction is going to stop. That condition is called the cardiac arrhythmic condition. So here you can observe whatever the normal heart rate and abnormal heart rate are there. Now in first diagram the normal heart rate which contain all phases that is p q r s t waves so in first diagram you can observe there will be neatly given regarding p q r s t waves but let's start with arrhythmic condition right so whenever heart rate is going to increases at that time that p q r s t wave is going to disturb now here we can observe as compared to r wave that s and t wave is going to contract it in the fast heartbeat whenever heart rate is going to decreases there will be prolongation in between the s and t waves then in irregular heartbeat there will be whatever p q or q r or q r s complex will be there that all will be going to disturb so this is the difference whenever the normal heart rate will be there then fast heart rate will be there slow heart rate will be there and arrhythmic condition that is irregular heart rate will be there so here the p q r s t whatever the indications are there that is given in this diagram so p waves which conduct depolarization of atria in response to s a node triggering so whenever s a node will going to trigger at that time impulses start to conduct from ac node to av node that will occur because of p wave then at pr interval 
there will be delay of av node to allow filling of the ventricles then at that qrs complex there will be depolarization of the ventricles along with the depolarization of ventricles it triggers main pumping contractions then in case of st segment this one that will stand for beginning of ventricle repolarization that should be flat one so this flat part or flat portion of this st will indicate the repolarization will begin and the t wave that stand for the ventricular repolarization then next is so these are the some common terminologies which use in the arrhythmia first one is the automaticity so automaticity is nothing but the capacity of cell to undergo spontaneous diastolic depolarization so whenever a trauma will be occurred or any other condition will be occurred due to which there will be sudden changes in the diastolic depolarization and that is called the automaticity then second concept is the excitability it is nothing but the ability of cell to respond to external stimulus by depolarization phase third one is the threshold potential threshold potential means it is level of intracellular negativity which occurred at arbert and complete depolarization so these are the some common terminologies which use in the cardiac arrhythmia so as i told in arrhythmic condition there will be re entry of the impulses into the ascending node so as per normal conduction the impulses should be generated and after generation they should be conducted from ascending node to the purkinje's fiber but in case of arrhythmic condition that impulses they are not going to conduct from ac node to av node and from av node to purkinje's fiber so they are going to return or re enter into the ac node only and that's why the there will be improper conduction of the impulses so here you can observe how this re entry of the impulses occurred in ac node in the first diagram that is diagram a the normal conduction of the impulses you can observe here right but in second second diagram you can observe whenever from ac node there should be conducted from ac node to the av and purkinje's fibers and from purkinje's fibers it should be conducted to all parts but in case of arrhythmic condition you can observe a pinkish block diagram so this indicate whatever the smooth conduction of the impulses should be there from ac node to av node the, that will going to block and due to which that impulses are unable to move further and they going to return back into the ac node so this is the phase of action potential in the cardiac cell starting from phase 0 then phase 0 that will occur the rapid depolarization and depolarization occurred wherever the influx of sodium will occur then phase 1 the partial repolarization will be occurred in partial repolarization whatever the sodium current will be activated that going to deactivate and the outflow of the potassium will going to increases then at phase 2 means here so that phase 2 is called the plateau phase at this phase there will be slow inward of the calcium current means at this phase slowly the calcium channels are going to open then at phase 3 there will be repolarization occurred as calcium current get inactivates and at phase 3 the potassium outflow will be increases then at phase 4 again the pacemaker potential will be there due to which sodium uh, inflow occurred in slow manner again potassium outflow occurred in slow manner and that term is called the autorhythmicity so this is the starting from phase 0 to phase 4 so again in this diagram whatever the repolarization depolarization occurred at the phase starting from phase 0 to up to phase 4 that is given in this diagram so let's start with the main part 
of the drugs that is classification of antiarrhythmic drug so this antiarrhythmic drugs mainly divided into five types first one is the class 1 which involve sodium channel blockers second one is the class 2 that is beta blockers that is beta adrenergic blockers like propanolol acetabulol and ismolol third one is the class 3 which involve potassium channel blockers and the drugs are amiodarone then brutilium and sotalol then class 4 mainly involve calcium channel blockers and examples of calcium channel blockers are verapamil diridazim etc and apart from this four classes the other classes miscellaneous for uh, psvt the examples are adenosine and digoxin and for av blockers the examples is atropin then this class 1 that is sodium channel blockers again divided into three type class a class b and class c so class a these are the drugs the which prolong the repolarization phase and examples are quinidine procainamide then disopiramide and morsizine then class b that involve short acting repolarization drugs and examples are lignocaine mexilatin and phenytoin then class c involve little effect of repolarization and examples are incanidine flecainidine and propanfera so let's start with the first category of this blocker sodium channel blocker so these are the drugs which are going to attack on the sodium channels and thereby they will block the sodium channels and after blocking sodium channels whatever the influx occurred in case of the sodium ions that will going to totally decrease they act on initial rapid depolarization initial rapid depolarization means at phase 0 right so apart from this they also act as a local anesthetic agents whenever we are going to use high concentration of this drug and thereby they block the nerve conduction they go do they do not alter resting membrane potential as they act as a membrane stabilizers then at a time the post repolarization refractionation and they going to bind to open channel state whenever sodium channels are in open state at that time they will attack on this open state of the sodium channel and block the sodium channels then use is dependent like more the channel is in use more drug is going to bound to sodium channels so class a drugs that is quinidine so here in the diagram the mechanism of action of quinidine is given okay so as i told these drugs are going to prolong the depolarization phase okay so they will act like this okay so here this one is the membrane okay so this greenish arrow will indicate the outflux of the potassium and this bluish arrow will indicate the influx of the calcium right so during this prolongation of the sodium channels or the opening of the sodium channel outflux of the potassium will going to increase and along with this the influx of calcium is also going to increase so this is the mechanism of quinidine so quinidine block sodium channels and thereby they are going to decrease automaticity conduction velocity and they prolong the repolarization phase also they are going to decrease phase zero depolarization and increase the whatever the action potential or the erp will be there then other actions apart from this they are going to decrease blood pressure by blocking the alpha receptors and along with this they also relax the skeletal muscles it is used in arterial as well as ventricular arrhythmia then adverse effect of the quinidines are arrhythmia heart block hypotension qt phase prolongation in gi they are going to disturb some gi enzyme thrombocytopenia hepatitis idiosyncratic reactions and if you are using high dose of quinidine they will give the adverse effect like syntonism like quinidine then next is the procainamide so procainamide they basically derived from the procain 
there is no vagulicity or alpha blocking action unlike cunidine as i told you last slide cunidine along with other sodium blocking effect they also block the alpha receptors but in case of procainamide procainamide will not going to block the alpha receptors they are better tolerated and the adverse effects are nausea vomiting hypersensitivity reaction and if you are using the high dose of procainamide they causes hypotension heart block and qt prolongation the next drug is the diazopyramide so the significant anticholinergic properties of these drugs are like dry mouth blood vision constipation urinary retention then class b drug of the sodium channel block so mainly these drugs involve lignocaine phenytoin and mexilectin so these drugs block sodium channels also shorten the repolarization so let's start with lignocaine so along with this the basic category of lignocaine is local anesthetic drug so this lignocaine going to increase threshold frequency and thereby they decrease the automaticity they suppress electrical activity of arrhythmogenic tissue normal tissue will get less affected the high first pass metabolism so given parenterally and it is used in ventricular arrhythmia the adverse effects of lignocaine are drowsiness hypotension blurred vision confusion and convulsions the kinetics that is pharmacokinetics of the lignocaine are they having high first pass metabolism the metabolism mainly depend on hepatic blood flow the t a half of lignocaine is near about 8 minutes it will get distributed and 2 hours will require for a elimination of this lignocaine the propanolol will decreases half life of the lignocaine and that's why we should avoid this lignocaine along with the propanolol the dose required that is 50 to 100 mg by bolus and followed by 24 to 40 mg every 10 to 20 minutes by iv route so the lignocaine the lignocaine that word stand for l stand for local anesthetic i stand for inactive orally g stand for given iv for antiarrhythmic action n stand for sodium channel blocker which occurs o stand for only in inactive state of the sodium channels c stand for cns side effects in high doses a stand for action that lasts only for 15 minutes i stand for inhibits purkinje's fibers as well as ventricles n stand for no action on av and sa nodes and e stand for effective in ventricular arrhythmia the next drug is the phenytoin so phenytoin basic category of phenytoin is nothing but the anti convulsion drug so it also helpful to cure ventricular arrhythmia and digitalis is induced uh, water digitalis is going to induce the arrhythmia that also going to covered by the phenytoin the next is mexilatin so mexilatin can be used orally which causes dose related effect that is neurological adverse effect like tremors and blurred vision and apart from this the other side effect is the nausea from which nausea is one of the common side effect it is used as an alternative to lignocaine in ventricular arrhythmia then class c drugs of the sodium channel blocker which involve echinide flecainide and propafenol so they have minimal effect on repolarization and they are most potent sodium channel blockers as compared to class a and class b so the risk of cardiac arrest sudden death so they are not used commonly so this is the reason we prefer class a and class b type of sodium channels so they also use in severe ventricular arrhythmia so here the comparison between the class a class b and class c sodium channel blocker is given for example the class a are moderate type of sodium channel blockers class b are mild type of sodium channel blockers whereas class c are the potent type of sodium channel blockers 
So, I'll compare it with the points are given in this table. Then let's start with second category that is class 2 drugs. So, this mainly involve beta blockers that is beta adrenergic blockers which going to suppress adrenergically mediated ectopic activity. So, antiarrhythmic action uh, due to beta blockade and they depress myocardial contractility, automaticity and conduct velocity. So, drug which commonly used from this category is propanolol. So, propanolol used in the treatment and prevention of supraventricular arrhythmia, especially which associated with exercise, emotion and hyperthyroidism. Then second drug is the ismolol. So, ismolol, if you are giving this drug by IV route, so it will going to give shorter action. And it is used to treat the arrhythmia during surgery following that is myocardial infraction and some other emergencies. So, ismolol is the beta 1 selective agent. It having very short elimination T half that is 2 to 9 minutes. Then it metabolized by RBC esterase and the rate control of rapidly conducted AF and they may basically use in arrhythmia which associated with the anesthesia and it also used to cure the supraventricular tachycardia. So, this beta blockers mainly increases automaticity, increases AV conduction velocity and decreases the refractory period. So, this beta adrenergic blocker competitively block catecholamines. So, whatever the release of catecholamines like adrenaline, noradrenaline, isoprenaline, they are going to block by these beta blockers and whatever the cardiac receptors going to activate after stimulation of these catecholamines that all beta block, beta receptors are going to block by the beta blocker drugs. So here whatever the beta adrenergic stimulation and beta blockers are there that opposite actions are given in this table. So, let's start with discussion. So, first is the in beta adrenergic stimulation, there will be increases magnitude of calcium current and slow its inactivation. But in case of beta blockers, they are going to block the receptors and thereby they decreases the intracellular calcium overload. Then in stimulation, they increases pacemaker current due to which heart rate is also going to increase. But in case of beta blocker, they decrease the pacemaker current and thereby they will going to decrease the heart rate. Then in stimulation, they increase whatever the action potential will be there and due to action potential which mediate the arrhythmia. Then in case of beta blockers, they inhibit after depolarization and mediate the automaticity. Then in adrenergic stimulation, the epinephrine induce hypokalemia through the beta 2 receptor and in beta blocker propanolol will act as an antagonist of the epinephrine and they block the action or whatever the hypokalemia going to induce by this epinephrine. So here in short the comparison between beta adrenergic stimulation and beta blocker is given. So uses of this in arrhythmia they control supraventricular arrhythmia like atrial flutter, fibrillation, PSVT. Then they also used to treat tachyarrhythmia which basically caused by adrenergic drugs that is hyperthyroidism. Then pyochromocytoma which occur during the anesthesia with halothene. Then it also cured digitalis induced tachyarrhythmia, prophylactic in post myocardial infraction and they also used to cure the ventricular arrhythmia which is occurred because of prolongation of QT syndrome. So here the mechanism in the diagram given for the class 3 drugs. Okay. So basically they are going to attack on the potassium channel. So here you can observe the greenish arrow that indicate the potassium channels. So on this potassium channels the amiodarone, then dofetidyl and satellite will block this potassium channels and thereby whatever the flux are occurred in the potassium ions that will going to block.
then amiodarone so it iodine containing drug which act for the longer period of time the mechanism of action of this drug is it having multiple action like it prolong action potential phase by blocking potassium channel then it also block inactivated sodium channels then beta blocking action it having and thereby it blocks the calcium channels also they are going to decrease conduction and ectopic automaticity the pharmacokinetics of this drug the variable absorption is near about 35 to 65 percent and slow onset which required at least two days to several weeks the duration of action is which required week to several month and the many drug interactions are there if you are using this drug so uses it used to treat supraventricular as well as ventricular tachycardia the adverse effects are in cardiac heart block will be there qt prolongation bradycardia cardiac failure and hypotension then in case of pulmonary the pneumonitis which leads to pulmonary fibrosis and bluish the decoloration of skin then there will be gi disturbances hepatotoxicity occurred it blocks peripheral convergence of t4 to t3 which causes the hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism again as like lignocaine the amiodarone stand for a stand for antiarrhythmic activity m stand for multiple actions i stand for iodine containing o stand for orally use mainly d stand for duration of action which is long a stand for epd and erf increases r stand for resistance af recurrent O stand for on prolonged use pulmonary fibrosis N stand for neuropathy may occur and I stand for in eye the corneal micro deposit may occur then apart from this drug the other drugs are bretilium it is adrenergic neuronal blocker which used to resist the ventricular arrhythmia then sotalol sotalol which act as a beta blocker drug dofidilin that act as a selective potassium channel blocker and it is it having less adverse event so orally we can use this drug to convert the or maintain the sinus rhythm then ibutidin which uh, act as a potassium channel blockers and basically it is used as a iv infusion in af or flutter can be cure, cause the qt prolongation then next category it is class 4 which involve calcium channel blockers so as name indicate they are going to block the calcium channels so they inhibit inward movement of calcium so calcium which basically stand for the contraction of the muscles so whenever the calcium channels will going to block so whatever the intracellular concentration of calcium is increases that will going to decreases and that's why the muscle will going to relax so this calcium channel blockers inhibit inward movement of calcium and thereby they decrease the contractility of muscles automaticity and av contraction the major examples are verapamil and diltiazepam so verapamil basically used to terminate psvt and control ventricular rate in arterial flutter or fibrillation if you are using this verapamil along with decoxin so drug interaction will be occurred so this verapamil will displace decoxin from binding sites and along with that it also decreases the renal clearance of decoxin so we should avoid this verapamil along with the decoxin then other antiarrhythmic drugs are adenosine so adenosine is a purine nucleated nucleotide which having short and rapid action so the mechanism of action of this adenosine is it is acetylcholine sensitive potassium channels which causes membrane hyperpolarization through interaction with a1 type of adenosine glycoprotein on sa node iv suppress automaticity av conduction and it dilates the coronaries so it is as for first choice of drugs which basically used to treat the psvt 
the adverse event of this adenosine are nausea dyspnea flushing and headache then other drugs are atropine which used in treatment of sinus bradycardia digitalis which used in atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter then magnesium sulfate that used in the uh, treatment of arrhythmia which basically induced by digitalis so here the mechanism of adenosine is given so they act on the specific g protein couple adenosine receptors and after binding on the receptor they will activate uh, acetyl sensitive potassium channels in sa node ab node and atria so in next step once this all will get activate there will be shorten of apd hyperpolarization and decrease the automaticity then it resulted in inhibit effect of cyclic amp increase the cyclic amp with sympathetic stimulation and thereby they are going to decrease the calcium current and once the calcium current will going to decrease they resulted in increase the av nodal refractination and inhibits the dips then magnesium so magnesium it's a having unknown mechanism but apart from this it influences sodium as well as potassium ATPase sodium channels certain potassium channels and calcium channels basically the magnesium used in the treatment of arrhythmia which induced by digitalis so these drugs given 1 gram over the 20 minutes so here the diagram is given in which at what stage of the action potential the anti arrhythmic drugs will going to give their action for example at phase 0 the sodium channels will going to give their action means they will go going to block the sodium induce depolarization then at phase 2 the calcium channel blocker will going to give their action which uh, they will block the calcium channel here then at phase 3 potassium channels will block the potassium channel and thereby whatever the outflux will going to increases of the potassium that is going to inhibit it then at phase 4 the beta blockers will going to give their action in the last here the types of arrhythmia is given that is sinus tachycardia atrial extrasystole atrial fibrillation flutter psvt ventricular tachycardia ventricular fibrillation and av block and according to the type of arrhythmia which drug mostly prefer in the treatment that is given for example in sinus tachycardia the propranolol will be used again in atrial extrasystole propranolol will going to use in case of atrial fibrillation and flutter we can use ismolol pirapamil and dicoxin then in case of the treatment of the psvt we can use adenosine and ismolol then in ventricular tachycardia we can use lignocan procainamide and amiodarone and in ventricular fibrillation we can use lignocan amiodarone and in av block we can use atropine and isoprenal so here we have completed the anti arrhythmic drugs